Okay, so what we're going to do is focus on creating the HDA that handles projecting the height field onto our terrain layout. All right, so let's jump over into Houdini and get it going. All right, so let's go and create the HDA. So if we dive into our top network here, in our main top network, we need to provide this HDA processor with a, an HDA file. Now this HDA is going to be responsible for projecting a height field onto this particular layout. And this is key to this process because we need to turn all this layout geometry into an actual terrain. Okay, and that terrain is going to be a height, a height field file. All right, so what I want to do is I actually want to make uh, this particular HDA a SOP level HDA. This way I can utilize the create file SOP input option. And this is a, just a really quick way to basically provide the output into the input of a, of a HDA itself. Okay, so let's take a look at how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new geometry node here. And this geometry node is basically going to be called our SOP HDAs, like so. And this is where I'm going to contain all of my SOP level HDAs. And the majority of the HDAs that we use in this particular top network are going to be SOP HDAs. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to create a new height field. All right. I'm going to hit Shift C on the keyboard to put that into a subnet. And then I'm going to turn this into a digital asset. And that we should actually name this first. So I'm going to call this IP Project Terrain, like so. And we need one more R in there. There we go. All right, so with the name set, let's go and say create a digital asset. All right, so let's go through our usual process here and just get rid of that and we'll capitalize that. There we go. And again, I want to make sure I put it into my actual Houdini project here. All right, so we're going to put it into that HDA folder. Cool, so everything is good to go there. So let's hit accept and accept. And there we go. So now we have a digital asset. We have our type properties window all open and ready to go. So the first thing that we need to do, because we want to utilize that create file input. So let's take one more look here. Let's create file SOP input. Because we want to utilize that particular feature inside of tops, what we need to do is we actually need to create a single input and no output for our particular HDA. So to do that, we go to the basic tab over here and we're going to say our minimum input has to be one and our maximum input is going to be one. And our maximum output is going to be zero. Okay, so we're going to hit apply. And there you go. So right off the bat, we now have our HDA with a single input. And this input needs to take in a terrain layout. So what we can do is we can go to the input output tab here and actually provide a little bit of information to the user. So we're going to say uh, get terrain layout, like so. Hit apply. And now when we hover over that first input, you can see that we have this required get terrain layout. All right, so let's just push the type properties off to the side there. So I want to be able to test this. And so in order to test this, I needed to basically simulate the process that the top network is doing. So we're passing in the output of this file pattern node right here. Okay, so I want to simulate that process while I'm building my HDA. So I'm not just guessing. And so basically to simulate the process, I'm going to drop down a file node. We're going to say get uh, layout. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize that P PDG output attribute. So we're going to say PDG output, like so. And we'll turn that on. You can see now I have my layout. Cool. So what I can do is I can actually feed that into my HDA. And there we go. So now we're, we're able to see the layout so we can actually build our HDA and know that we're actually doing the right thing. Great. Cool. So hopefully that makes sense. We're simulating the process of sending in the output from our PDG uh, network, or our TOPS network. Okay, so with that in place, uh, what I want to do is I also want to make sure our size is the same. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do is set this to 1025, and we'll just copy this parameter and put it over there. All right, we'll promote all this stuff um, to our top network later on. All right, but for now, we're going to just work with 1025 because here inside of Unity, uh, I left this terrain at 1025. Cool. So let's go back over here and everything else is fine for now. So what I want to do is drop down a height field project node. And what I'm going to do with this is feed in the height field. I'm going to feed in my terrain layout and look at that. We now have a terrain using our layout. Super cool. 
I love this stuff. Okay, so I want to do a couple more things inside of this HDA because this is a really rough layout and we could we could add a few more things to this just to kind of clean it up. Just a few more options. So the first thing I want to do is a little bit of a blur. So I'm going to do a height field blur like so. Cool. And this basically just helps, you know, get rid of some of the geometric lines that we got from our our cones that are simulating our mountains there. Okay, and then I want to also do a little bit of a distortion. All right, so let's distort this. So we're going to do a height field distort by noise. There we go. And this just helps us, you know, make it feel a little bit more natural. So I'm going to change the element size here and just kind of pump up the distortion amount a little bit more, maybe a little bit larger on that element size there. There we go. So now we're starting to get something that just feels a little bit more natural, you know, not so much like they're just a bunch of cones scattered about a grid. Very cool. So now we're bu building mountains and moving mountains. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. So the next thing I want to do is I want to do a mask by feature. So I just start typing out a feature there. And let's do that one more time. All right, height field mask by feature. And this allows me to, to mask out certain areas of uh, my terrain. So what I want to do is I'm going to mask out by a slope angle here. And let's ex let's just play with these guys. So I'm just going to move that and then let's actually do something more. Well, that's pretty good. Do something like that. All right. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to uh, take advantage of using the slump node. So I'm going to start typing out slump. And the slump node needs a mask for it to work on because it's going to take all that that terrain information or that height field information and it's going to displace it downwards for me. It just kind of simulates uh, dirt moving in large chunks, if you will, like so. All right, just another level of realism for our terrain. So I'm just going to kind of pump this up like so. You can always change the re repose angle there. Get something a little more interesting. You know, something like that. Cool. And what I want to do is just clear that mask. So we'll do a height field mask clear. And there we have it. Now we're starting to get something that is starting to look more terrain like really quickly. So you can see how we're starting to build up this procedural process, this whole system for gener generating terrains using tops and PDG. Cool. So with that, let's promote a few parameters. So I'm going to put a null node down here. All right. Because we need to get this hooked into our top network. So we're going to say out um, projected terrain like so. All right. So I, I also want to promote some parameters so we can utilize them uh, inside of our top network. Okay. So I'm going to go to the height field here and I want to promote the size like so. So I'm going to put all these guys into a folder as well. So this is just going to be the height field. All right. And again, I'm going to make it collapsible. And I'm going to create another folder over here. And this is going to be called our distortion. All right. Let's just call this um, effects, actually. How about we do that? We'll call it effects, like so. Uh, because what I want to do is I want to promote the blur. All right. We'll call this uh, blur amount and I want to promote the amplitude and element size so we can actually adjust those in unity as well and then I want to promote the spread iterations for the slumping and I think that's everything that I want to do so we'll leave it at that for now obviously you can go through and you promote as much as you'd like right all of that stuff is fully promotable all right Cool. So now let's go back into our top network now. Okay. And uh, let's turn off our PDG viz for now. Well, actually, let's leave it on. Let's turn off our SOP uh, HDAs and let's go into our top network here and let's assign our new HDA to our HDA processor. All right. So all I need to do is go and find that file in our project here, HDAs, and we're going to go and get the project terrain HDA like so. Very cool. And so I'm going to update my HDA parameters. And you'll notice now we have all of those particular properties. Oh, and I forgot to make the effects folder collapsible. So let's just 
watch and learn how this is done. So I'm going to edit the type properties here. I'm going to go to the effects folder, change it to collapsible, hit apply and accept. All right, I'm going to jump out, go into our top network that we're building. And I'm going to go into HDA processor now and say update HDA parameters. And you can see now they're both collapsible. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right, so let's go and take a look at this. So now what I need to do in order for this to work is I need this to utilize that create file SOP inputs. All right, and that's going to pass the output from this file pattern into my HDA down here. All right, and we want to be able to write the geometry. And this is where our particular output file name is going to go. All right, so our PDG dir is where our local working directory is. All right, so that's our project, so that's great. So we're going to put it into that geo folder. All right, so that means it's going to go into here where our terrain layout is. Okay, and then we have this dollar OS, and that just means it's going to pick up the name of the actual node. Okay, and so we could use dollar OS, and then we have the PDG name, which is that name that we see in that task view or task graph table. Right, so we have this guy right here. But since we don't have it, this one particularly cooked, you can see that this one is called file pattern 1 1, and this will be called project height field. So we probably don't need the OS in there. We'll just do pdg name.bgo.sc. And what we'll do is we'll give this a tag of projected. There you go, just so we give it some more meta information. And with that, we should be able to cook now. So let's right click on this and say cook selected node. And it's going to roll through it. And because we're projecting a, a height field, it's going to take a little bit here. And there we go. So now if we were to go to the information for this, all right, you can see we have this hip geo project height field one dot bgo sc. If we go to our project directory, you can see now we have this project height field one dot bgo. Look at that. If we go to our task graph, ta graph table, here we go, we have our name, which is project height field one. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so hopefully, you know, the dynamics of how files and how data is being passed through PDG is starting to, to sink in. All right, and you can see now that we clicked on our little work item here, we can actually see the results of our projected height field. Super cool. All right, so I'm gonna leave you guys there. In the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on eroding the terrain now. Okay, thanks so much.